Alims didn't know English. Number two, they just conquered us. And if you speak too hard, too harsh, they might send us to the Andaman Islands, black waters, like the Robben Island in South Africa, out of the way. You want to take a chance? <coughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Jesse Keegan, and you're watching Funny and Jesse. So, right about now, we're gonna do another reaction video. And before we get into the reaction, guys, I want to thank everybody who've been subscribing to our channel. You're the real MVP, man. And we want to thank the people who've been actually trying to give us a lot of reaction videos. You're the realest too, man. There's a lot of reaction videos that we're supposed to do and we are planning on doing them, guys. So just be patient with us and thank you so much for giving us those reaction videos. And so, without wasting time, guys, today I'm going to do another reaction video. And today, as usual, we're going to do the dad. And a lot of people have actually been suggesting this one. I mean, people love the dad so much. And I believe he's also a very good uh, teacher. He's a very good... Um, what do you call this? Uh, 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 yeah, let's say teacher, just to be precise. I feel like most of the people resonate with his teaching. And I feel he's also really funny and he knows how to articulate things in a very better way. So guys, uh, you suggestion, a lot of people suggested this one and they decided, and they suggested that I should go react to, or rather we should go react to the dad at his best part 17. So without any further ado guys, let's get it. Spelled out in English. Latin. I Z H A R U L H A K is Harul Haq. Sounds like Muslim. Is Harul Haq? Does it sound like Muslim? But what is this Harul Haq? I don't know. At the bottom, in brackets, in smaller types, is written the truth revealed. So uh, maybe this word is Harul Haq means the truth revealed. So I sit down on the ground in the dust and I start reading. I have no time to. Waste. There, there, I'm hungry, I'm going to read. What is it all about? So I read, started reading this book, there on the ground, in the dust. That this book was written by Arab, Rahmatullah Hindi, to help the Indian Muslims to give battle to the Nasara, the Christians. It speaks about the British conquest of India. As the British came and conquered your country, conquered Ghana, conquered Nigeria, they conquered India, they conquered Malaysia. When they conquered my country, India, they realized that at any time anybody will give them trouble, in India will be the Muslims. Because power, rule, dominion was wrenched out of their hand, and once you have tasted power, you aspire for it once more. So but the problem is the Muslim. If you can convert the Muslim, if you can teach him to turn the other cheek, like he said, he will strike him the right cheek doing the other. Once you make the Muslim to do that, then you can rule India for a thousand years. So convert the Muslim. So they started pouring in the missionaries like frogs in the rainy season. The Christian missionaries, they started coming into India. And they started challenging the Muslims to public debates. Munasira. At first the Muslims were reluctant. Number one, they didn't know the language. The British are speaking English, they want to talk to you and debate with you in English. He said, I don't know English. Our aliens didn't know English. Number two, they just conquered us. And if you speak too hard, too harsh, they might send us to the Andaman Islands, black waters, like the Robben Island in South Africa, out of the way. You want to take a chance? So the Muslims were not cooperating. They didn't want to debate. Number one, language problem. Number two, fear. So the Christian missionaries, they mastered our language. Urdu. The language of the elite, the Ali. And they started challenging us to debate with you in your language. Like our Ali must say, look, we only know, we only know Swahili. So the guy learns Swahili. He said, your Ali, bring him in Swahili, you want to debate with him. Can you say no? In your language. So the Muslims were forced to accept. And Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, he accepted the challenge. He was forced to accept the challenge. And the debate takes place. And I'm told in the book that a hundred thousand people gathered. There was no sound system, no horns, nothing. Our voice traveled Allah was best. But people were there watching on fire and they said, well, what's going on? Somebody is giving a commentary. You say, you know, the Mawlana gave one uppercut like that. And this guy said, commentaries are going on. No sound system. 
There was no sound system those days. So debate us. With the reverend, reverend founder by name, reverend founder, the Britisher, he suggests to the Maulana that Maulana Sahib, respected Maulana Ali, gets started. So the Maulana says, you see, Christianity preceded Islam by 600 years. As such, you are our elder brother. You are 600 years older than us. And according to our lecture, our elder brother has the first chance. <laughs> Number two, he says, you are our guest. You are a guest in our country, without an unwelcome guest, but still you are a guest. So according to our culture, you have the first place. So the reverend was forced to start, and he started with a question, with a poser, with a riddle. Said so Maulana Sahib in Urdu, speaking in Urdu. Maulana Sahib respected Ali, Maulana. Where is your Prophet Muhammad now, now, this minute, where is he now? So the Maulana for the moment, and he said, he is in Jannah to Firdaus, heaven be blessed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right. If your prophet was with this Allah, where was he when his grandson Hussein was murdered at Karbala? When Yazid chopped off his head, where was your prophet Muhammad then? So the Maulana again thought for a moment and he said he was still in Jannah to Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the third question. It was planned strategy. He said, all right, all right, if your Muhammad was with his Allah, the grandson Hussein was martyred, <coughs> slaughtered at Karbala, did he not ask his Allah for help? Say, oh my Lord, look what they do to my grandson, please help him out of his difficulty. Didn't he ask his Allah for help? And there was a long pause. And the, the priest couldn't hold his patience. He started stamping his feet. He said, come on, come on. Did he not ask his Allah for help? It's natural, natural. You see, I have a big brother. Somebody's bullying me. But brother, look, man, look at this guy here. What is he doing to me? He naturally, you call for help. And your Allah is there, the Almighty, the All-Powerful. And you're not going to ask him for help? He says, come on, come on. Did he or didn't he ask his Allah for help? So the Maulana, he said, yes, he did. He did ask Allah for help. Then what did I say? Because you know he wasn't saved. What did Allah say? And there was an inordinate, very long pause. And the priest again lost his spirit, started stamping his head. Come on, come on. What did Allah say? So the Maulana starts. He says, Allah cried. Allah cried. <laughs> so what? Allah cried. He said, yes, Allah cried. He said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? <laughs> and the debate was over. The debate was over. You see, debate had nothing with facts. Facts. It was a matching of the wits, cleverness. Who is the cleverer of the two wins the battle? And Alhamdulillah, the Maulana won the battle. But this was the old-fashioned way of trying to be argumentative, debating, making a fool of you, making a mockery of you, making a mockery of Islam. But the Christians have advanced a lot since then. They learned that by this method, they can't get converts. You creating enemies, no converts. Wow, <laughs> man. I mean, um, the dad is always at his best, man. I mean, I like the fact that people are surrounding him and are just looking at him and listening to him. He's such a good orator or such a good speaker. He's really, really amazing. And uh, I like the way he tells the story. Really charismatic and amazing. Anyway, uh, there's a little bit of humor here and there. Um, he will, I mean, just generally, he was talking about how uh, all this debate started and whatnot. And like, something that I really didn't know was that, like, the missionaries were actually deployed in India so that they can try and infiltrate the Islam community and try to probably 
create imbalance in them <coughs> and try to make them probably convert into Christianity, which is um, what do you call this? It's I don't know to say it's a bad thing or it's a good thing, but anyway, I feel it's just something that uh, they really wanted Christianity to spread all over the world, so they wanted to go maybe to spread all over the world and they felt like let's start from here or maybe let's go to and I feel like I feel like they wanted Christianity to spread all over the world so they wanted maybe Islam to convert into 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 Christianity which I don't know why people do that man I don't know I mean let people uh, let people have a feel of themselves to convert to get it not force them to. I believe everybody has a religion. You know, when we were born, we didn't have a choice because we were forced to be in a religion where your parents are in. And uh, I believe that as you grow up, you probably have a choice. You probably have a choice to decide where you want to go, which religion you want to follow. But anyway, back in those days, it was different. People are being forced. And I read a story back in, I mean, I read history books and they were saying that people are being forced to even convert somewhere even if you're not converting they probably torture you they probably beat you up and stuff like that that was so bad i mean so bad gladly we are in a different age new age now that uh, nobody's here to force you and nobody's here to hold the gun on you and tell you you have to convert to this and that i think it's just you have to use your common sense and find peace in any religion you feel like it's going to feed you and anyway guys, I mean, did uh, that really put it in the right way? And uh, I mean, the whole thing was just amazing. I really enjoyed the, the entire uh, speech. Such an amazing one. And uh, yeah, I mean, such a funny guy, such an amazing person, amazing personality. And I wanted to ask you guys something. Do you feel these debates between religions are making is it for the best or is it for the worst? You get it? I know we want to find the truth. I know we want to actually know, uh, find the right religion or probably the best religion out there. But is it for the best or for the worst? Maybe just go down on the comment section and just let me know. Cause um, I'm trying to find out. Just help me guys. Just let me know in the comment section below. Anyway guys, if you feel like I reacted to this video in a better way, just give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in the comment section and tell me exactly what you feel about our, what you feel about my reaction video and what you feel about this video right here about um, the dad at his best. Man, just let me know in the comment section below, man. What do you think? What do you think? And what do you think? And the most important thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep on subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you better, better content. And last but not the least, we're going to see you rather. I'm going to see you in the next video and peace out.